It's that time again, folks. Christmas in July. If you clicked on this video, then you know what's up. We're gearing up for the Barnes & Noble 50% off Criterion sale, where everything in the Criterion collection is half off for the month of July. Now, I know, kid in a candy store vibes. I'm excited and I'm ready to storm my local Barnes & Noble. But you may be asking yourself, well, I'm a little lost, Bill, on some films, you know? Like, I, I've got my definitives on my list, like maybe two or three. Like, I'm definitely gonna pick up Mirror, like, who isn't? But I'm kind of lost. What are your suggestions? Well, <laughs> thank you, and you're welcome. If you clicked on this video, you get to know about the five films that everyone must have in their Criterion collection. Now, of course, I'm not going to be talking about any obvious picks like Seven Samurai, Twelve Angry Men, Parasite, etc., etc. I'm picking some low-key films that, you know, you or I maybe aren't as acquainted with. You know, some films that maybe you've heard of but you haven't really seen. Like, films that deserve more spotlight in the collection. I'm going to start off with an icebreaker, you know, kind of a film that uh, anyone can get into for a wider audience, and specifically it's an English language film. Now, that's for the people who don't necessarily like reading subtitles, which, hey, I get you. A couple years ago, I was in your position too. I mean, granted, foreign films are beautiful, they're amazing. Honestly, sometimes they're better than American films most of the time. But if you are not comfortable yet with that, then this is a perfect crime thriller for you. This is spine number 691, Michael Mann's Thief. Now, starring James Caan, this film was made in 1981 and follows a safe cracker. You know, a guy who's on the prowl trying to get the next big gig. So if you like those criminal thrillers like uh, any of the Safdie Brothers films, I mean, of course, Scorsese, any of Michael Mann's other films such as Heat, Miami Vice, Collateral is a great example. Um, this is one of his first films, Thief, and you can already see such uh, style. Like you could see his signature camera work, his movements, his, his use of color, his use of environment. And it's also a film that has been borrowed over the years by other contemporary classics such as Drive. I mean, hell, the titles, <laughs> the titles alone are exactly the same, as well as having a rough and tough protagonist. Um, this is a perfect film for uh, your introduction to um, classic crime thrillers, as well as to the Criterion Collection. So I can't recommend this film enough. That is Thief by Michael Mann. Moving down the line, we are jumping into a foreign film. Actually, two, because they're in a set together. But hey, calm down. They're not uh, deep philosophical films that you really have to read. They're films that are filled with high-octane, high-testosterone action. High enough that you won't even realize that you're watching a foreign film. Spine numbers 971 and 972. Jackie Chan's Police Story 1 and 2. Both these films are incredible. Watching these, you'd be blown away by the amount of stunts that the team is able to pull off in this film. Jackie Chan is a madman in a sense that he goes balls to the walls on every shot, every frame. There's action, there's suspense, there's something going on. Even in the fight scenes where it looks like, you know, he's not necessarily killing anyone, like there's no death, there's no carnage. There are things going on. He uses inanimate objects, he uses cars, he uses umbrellas for God's sakes to beat up fools to get from point A to point B. It's riveting, incredible, and above all, entertaining. These two films are incredible. Cannot recommend them enough, especially for your introduction to world cinema. Police Stories 1 and 2 by Jackie Chan. Next up, we've got Spine number 1060, Amores Peros, 
by Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu. Now, he's most famous for making The Revenant and Birdman, both awesome films with Emmanuel Lubezki as the cinematographer, so there's that. But uh, this is his first feature film, actually, and it is a Spanish film because he is a Mexican director. And when I first watched this film, someone described this as the Mexican Pulp Fiction to me because there were multiple storylines, not really in order. And in that sense, they're right, but this is a much darker and much more bleak film than Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, they got jokes, they got pop culture. Now, if you're a dog lover, okay, this, this film may hinder you, even though Amores Peros translates to loves dogs. This film tackles uh, dog fighting and dog death. There's a lot of dog death in this film, and that can hinder a lot of people's perspectives when going into this, but if you get past that, it's a beautiful story. It's really powerful, and it follows three separate people in uh, Mexico City, and their lives are intertwined by two things, a great dog <laughs> and a car crash, fatal car crash. Not Cronenberg kinky car crash, but an actual terrifying car crash. So with that being said, this is Amores Peros from Inuritu. Going down the line, this is probably the most artsy, fartsy film I could recommend to anyone. This is spine number 593, Belle de Joux, from Louis Bunuel. Um, this film is a French film, obviously. <laughs> it was very non-English. And it's made in 1967. So, yeah, sounds kind of like it could be a little boring. Um, wrong. This film stars Catherine Deneuve, who is famous for a lot of roles. But, um... She plays a housewife that's unhappy with her life and starts fantasizing um, sexual encounters with other men. And it's really kinky. Like, this is a kinky film. Not quite as graphic as Fifty Shades of Grey, or Solo for that matter, but um, this is a very risque film, especially for the 1960s. Like, I'm surprised this film was even made. Though it sounds like it's a kinky film, an erotic film, it also has a lot of drama. It has a lot of story to be told, lessons to be learned, and most of all, um, social and class divisions. Like, it has a lot to say, and, you know, it's a beautiful film at that, and it's helmed by a very, very incredible um, lead female performance. So I cannot recommend Belle de Jour enough. And it's the most recent film I've watched in the collection, and it's already a new favorite of mine. So there you have it, Belle de Jour from Louis Bunuel. I wanted to save not only the best for last, but my favorite for last. These films are, oops, I said films. <laughs> I know I said five, but I cheated a little. And you can pick either one of these two, but in my opinion, these are a great introduction to my favorite filmmaker, that person being John Cassavetes. Now, the two films I recommend from him are Spine Numbers 957 and 1029, those films being Mikey and Nikki and Husbands. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, Bill, Mikey and Nikki isn't written and directed by John Cassavetes. Well, yeah, of course, it's written and directed by Elaine May. Um, very astute of you to observe, but you can't, if you've seen this film, you can't help but acknowledge the same chaotic energy that you get from a Cassavetes film. And he stars in the film opposite Peter Falk, and they're dynamic, they're electric, and I won't talk much about this film because I made a whole separate video about this film on my channel, so I will link that down below if you want to learn more about this incredible film. Like, this film might be in my top 10, and it tackles friendship and betrayal in such a unique way that I love. And, 
you know, the Cassavetes way is the best way, in my opinion. As for the second film, Husbands, this film was written and directed by Cassavetes. And keep in mind, this is a tough film to get through. Like, it's kind of jarring. It has a very fly-on-the-wall uh, camera perspective, and it's very chaotic. Like, chaotic. Like, the actors, they scream, they get drunk, they do whatever it is men do. And the film stars... John, of course, Peter Falk as well, and Ben Gazzara. And the story is about these three longtime friends who deal with the aftermath of one of their close friends um, dying, and they attend their funeral. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like, in a sense, a midlife crisis or a crisis of brotherhood and youth. And they try to avoid these like dark thoughts like damn like could you imagine someone your same age dying like a close friend of yours and thinking like why him and not me like when's my turn and that form of existentialism is explored in this film to a way that they try to avoid it as as much as possible and try to stay young and try to act like frat boys that they once were and it's a heartbreaking film in that sense that Mortality is a key role in our lives, and it can be heartbreaking to accept it. So, there you have it. Husbands by Cassavetes, as well as Mike and Nikki by Elaine May. Harry, I must be crazy because I have three Harry, of the Harry. loveliest ladies Harry. you have ever seen in Harry. your life. Harry, Gus, Harry. and I had yeah, a talk. Yeah. What? 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 We're going, going home. home. Just like that, that's my recommendation. Um... Thank you for watching this video, and please, if you've seen one of these films, comment your thoughts down below on them, and uh, I'm not looking for any wars or anything, but just tell me your thoughts and how you felt about these films. Maybe give me some recommendations. I have two or three, like, open slots that I don't really know what I want to get. I'm thinking maybe a box set, but I'm not quite sure. Um, please, just vibe out and... Good luck with life, and more. most importantly, good luck with the Barnes & Noble sale. I hope you get everything you wanted. And, uh, yeah, have a good day. Bye-bye, guys.